Rage 2 is a blast. An over the top open world shooter with some of the finest first person shooting I've played since Doom. Whilst there's plenty of areas which definitely could be better, such as the lackluster story, the repetitive open world elements and a few bugs here and there, the gunplay feels so damn good that the game's problems somewhat wash away. The game's first 30 minutes or so left me feeling a little unsure about Rage 2, a game I'd admittedly been pretty excited for in the lead up to the game's launch. Whilst you're thrown into the thick of combat, it's not until you receive a couple of weapons and abilities that things really start to get good. After strapping into your ability enhancing ranger suit, you're launched into the task of saving the wastelands from the almighty General Cross. A fairly generic looking large intimidating half robot half man villain. The plot is incredibly straightforward and it remains so throughout the entire game. Bad guy is bad, kill bad guy, save the world. Thankfully none of that really matters when the game's combat is so damn fun. Honestly this is the most fun I've had in a single player shooter in a long time. The influence of id Software is strong here and clearly developer Avalanche Studio have worked closely with the team at id to fine tune their weapons and gameplay mechanics. Headshots give off a satisfying pop and the assault rifle is ridiculously accurate. Oh and the shotgun. Rage 2 has one of the best video game shotguns in some time, it is so freaking satisfying. The chunky feeling beast of a gun can explode enemies at close range or alternatively send them flying to their doom via the secondary fire when you aim down the sights. There's even a Thanos pistol. Okay, not quite, but it does set foes ablaze with the snap of your fingers. Almost all of the game's weaponry just simply feels great. Combine the awesome guns with plenty of over the top abilities and some agile movement skills and you've got yourself an energetic mix of explosive fun. You quickly gain the ability to dash in any direction, on foot or in mid-air. It's an ability which has a stupidly low cooldown too. Remember, fun is the focus here. Blending this with various abilities such as a Fush Rodar style hand blast sending enemies sky high or the satisfying ground pound, the result is a purely awesome combat flow. These skills and abilities can even be upgraded further too with reduced cooldowns, stronger effects or additional dash charges for example. Rage 2 has upgrade trees coming out the wazoo. Everything can be upgraded from weapons to vehicles to abilities and passive projects tied to the three main quest givers. It's almost overkill and you're unlikely to max them out by quite a margin unless you're the kind of OCD open world player which has to complete everything on the map. That open world is one of the game's downfalls, it never really ends up adding much to the overall experience, apart from an excuse to engage in further combat and I'm ok with that. Whilst many will undoubtedly find issue with the repetitive open world tasks such as clearing outposts, performing races or discovering arcs, which is where the game's upgrades are located. For myself, these optional tasks just served as an opportunity to enjoy and experiment with the game's combat further. They obviously come with rewards allowing you to upgrade things and in turn end up feeling even stronger, but they're all optional. They're so optional in fact that you can go through the game's entire story without even uncovering all of the weapons and skills available in the game, let alone upgrading them. As a result, the game never forces a required skill in any of its activities, something which I think probably could have been done a little bit better. A metroidvania style approach might have been interesting here for example. There's no platforming style areas requiring specific abilities or anything of the kind. Rage 2's open world is effectively one giant playground, dishing out numerous tools and toys for you to screw around with, along with a whole bunch of enemies. And if I'm honest, I don't mind that. The game's vehicles pack a punch too, thanks largely to some brilliant audio work throughout the whole title. Everything in the game hits with serious bass. The all-terrain Phoenix vehicle provided from the very beginning can be upgraded with numerous new weapons and abilities over time. Whilst the PC version features some less than stellar vehicle controls, honestly they need to fix that, when I played on a gamepad I found the vehicles to handle fairly well. Driving around the open world 
only really serves to get from place to place. There's no real exciting discoveries or activities to partake in. The AI doesn't even really bother you whilst you're on your way around. There's races of course if that floats your boat, and heavily armoured convoys patrol the world, rewarding you with vehicle upgrade points when destroyed. Those I admittedly did have a great time participating in, with the glorious explosions and effects popping off leading to some pretty intense vehicular battles. Almost Mad Max style. However, the rewards only further upgrade the vehicle, which only really exists to get from point A to point B in the first place, so it's kind of all a little pointless. That is until you unlock the Icarus, which is a non-combative flying hovercraft style bike vehicle and it allows you to glide above the game's world with massive ease. Super handy. I did encounter plenty of little bugs here and there throughout my 10 or so hours it took to complete the main story. There were hard crashes to the dashboard, cutscenes freezing, the hood vanishing when returning from a pause and some dodgy lip syncing on NPCs. Oh, and meleeing those goddamn ammo boxes which always seems to miss, why? Nothing massively game breaking, but these issues were a little frustrating. Visually, the game actually looks pretty great in motion though. Effects and explosions look superbly dazzling and there's a nice use of colour amongst the game's drab wasteland world. But I've become so accustomed to playing games at higher resolutions these days that dropping back down to 1080p with a fairly blurry implementation of anti-aliasing made things appear noticeably soft when I started playing. I know right, first world problems. It didn't take me long to adapt and appreciate some of the game's more glamorous visual areas however, but it is still worth pointing out. More importantly, Rage 2 runs at 60fps on the enhanced consoles and I can't stress how essential that is to the core experience. The smooth frame rate ensures the combat feels snappy and satisfying. And given said combat is undoubtedly the best thing about the game, the frame rate is a vital element of the game's package. Disappointingly, playing the game on the base PS4 or Xbox One drops this down to 30 FPS, and honestly, it serves as a huge blow to the game in my overall opinion. Input lag becomes noticeably worse, and the whole combat flow just doesn't feel as good. You'll see some footage on screen right now of that in 30 FPS and you can clearly see the difference. I'd actually argue if my only option was to play the game on the base systems, my feelings about the title overall would probably be significantly different and my scoring of the game certainly might be affected. Whilst the core beats and moment to moment gameplay remain the same, it just simply won't play as well as it does at 60. Prioritising 60fps over a higher resolution was definitely the right choice by the developers on the enhanced consoles though, and that decision should be praised. Rage 2 is more than the sum of its parts. On paper, the uninspiring open world design and basic story doesn't really sound all that special, but playing the game is a completely different story. It is the most fun I've had in a first person shooter since Doom launched in 2016. That smooth combat flow, punchy satisfying weapons, over the top abilities just make this thing feel so damn good to play. Whether I was clearing out an outpost in hour 1 versus another in hour 10, it was all still just as fun, potentially even more so. Whilst I should arguably knock the overall package for its lesser elements, I just simply enjoyed my time with the game. At the end of the day, this is what video games are all about, enjoying yourself. Rage 2 is consistently great fun. It's not overly arty or particularly groundbreaking in any way, but it certainly is thoroughly entertaining. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit that bell button for notifications when we upload further videos. It really helps the channel a lot.